Hello and welcome to this brief introduction to the readings for this Sunday, the third Sunday of the year. And if you follow these readings in a missal, they are the readings for year C, the so-called year of Luke. Our first reading is from the book of Nehemiah, and it introduces us to two significant people in the history of Israel at the time of the return of the exiles from Babylon to Jerusalem in the 5th century BC. Ezra is the great religious reformer who established the Torah, the first five books, as we would say, of the Old Testament or the law, as the constitution of the restored community. Nehemiah is governor of the province of Judah. He is the man of action who rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem. In this Sunday's reading, we have an insight into how highly the word of God was regarded. The people have returned to Jerusalem, and the long-awaited moment when the word of God will be proclaimed in the temple once again has finally arrived. Ezra stands up on the site of the temple in Jerusalem and reads from the book of the law, and he does so from daybreak until noon. He stands above the people on a wooden dais so all can see the scroll from which he reads. The people rise and then bow down low, doing reverence to the Lord and to his word. The people weep as they hear the word of God being read. In the second reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, Paul encourages unity in the church, and he does so by comparing the church to the body. All parts of the body belong to one body and are indispensable to the body. The eye cannot say to the hands, I do not need you. The head cannot say to the feet, I do not need you. So, all members of the church, different though the gifts of each may be, are indispensable in forming the one church. The Gospel reading from Luke has two parts. The first consists in the opening words of the Gospel. Luke writes to Theophilus explaining the purpose of his Gospel, which is this. He will explain, after investigation, everything in an orderly sequence so that Theophilus might be sure of the certainty of the teachings which he has received. The second part takes us to the synagogue in Nazareth, Jesus' hometown. He has been baptised and now he begins his public ministry by reading from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, I have come to give good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind. This is, if you like, Jesus' manifesto. In the rest of his gospel, Luke shows how in Jesus, in what he says and in what he does, this prophecy about the coming of the Messiah is being fulfilled. Now, there are many ways, I think, in which we can take these readings into our lives and live them. In the spirit of the first, we can reflect on the people of Israel and how much they long to hear once again the word of the Lord being read to them. And we can reflect on our own longing to listen to the word of God. In the spirit of the second reading, we can pray for church unity, especially in this week of prayer for Christian unity, and ask ourselves what we can do to promote greater mutuality amongst all the followers of Christ, and how we can collaborate together in, for example, serving the neediest. And in the spirit of the gospel, I have come to bring good news to the poor. We can give thanks for all those who go to the aid of those who have least and, where possible, actively support them. Thank you.